Hello again, and welcome to Let's Play Grand Prix Legends. Uh, it's been a while since the last episode. It's been actually several months since the last episode. Uh, there's been a reason for that. Um, my life, uh, my personal life got very, very busy after the last episode. About the, a week after the, I recorded the last episode, I uh, graduated from college and moved my family 200 miles um, across the state of Wisconsin uh, to start a new uh, career job. And uh, so I've been very, very busy with with. Uh, starting the new job and with you know finishing school and everything like that so it's been a while since I've been able to record an episode uh, but we're back and uh, ready to continue with the 1965 season uh, I know I promised a few people that this episode would be a bit different from the normal formula um, I had originally wanted to make this kind of a special episode with uh, with trying to showcase some of the the mods for GPL like the set the uh, 1970 one Can-Am series, um, I think was what I was going to try to do, uh, but because it's been so long since I've recorded an episode and I haven't really run anything with the Can-Am in a long time, I just decided to skip that for now and uh, just get back to making a new episode. Uh, so for the race today, uh, it's at Brands Hatch for the 1965 Race of Champions. It's a two-race format with the overall winner being determined by the overall time for each driver, uh, much like the uh, Braun Grand Prix in Episode 1. Um, same sort of format, So, um, but today it's at Brands Hatch, and uh, this race was uh, first run in 1965, and uh, it was won by Mike, Mike Spence in a Lotus Climax. But uh, with that, let's let's take a look at the grid for today's race, for the first race. Uh, it's a six-lap race. Um, Jim Clark took the pole for the first race with a 137.22, alongside Graham Hill with a 137.44. Uh, I had a really terrible qualifying session, actually, so I'm down in 11th with a 139.76. I can do a much quicker lap than that, but I just could not put one together in qualifying for some reason. Um, usually for these episodes, I'll practice, you know, for a half an hour or an hour, you know, to, until I'm able to get a feel for the track and get my setup dialed in, and then I'll take one qualifying session, and uh, however well I do in that half hour qualifying session, that's what I uh, use in the episode, and in this case, I was just not able to put a good lap together, um, just kept spinning, or, you know, having traffic come out of the pits right in front of me as I was starting my lap, it just it did not go well, so it'll be an uphill battle for me, that's for sure, but uh, we'll see how it goes, and uh, without further delay, let's get started with the first race. Alright, here we are on the grid. Uh, I've had a few hardware changes on my computer. Unfortunately, they were downgrades, so I'm going to have a little bit of a frame rate issue, at least at first, with the traffic. Uh, the flag is up, and we're off for the first race of the Race of Champions. Got a good start, made up a couple positions right there. This first corner is going to be tight, though. Oh, very tight. Looks like I've got Mike Spence in front of me into this first breaking zone. Managed to get up alongside of him. And I think I'm past. Now you can see how choppy the picture is here at first. I'm going to try and get inside of Brabham. Oh, got it done. Excellent. Got a really good start. Looks like I'm in about 6th or 7th. Made up several positions on the start. That's really... That's good. Uh, right up onto the back of the other Brabham. I think this is Gurney. Wow, really got up into the back of him there. I did notice in practice that I can outbreak the uh, other competitors going into that corner at the end of the straightaway. Looks like I waited a little bit too long that time. Doesn't appear to have affected the car at all. Doesn't look like it's affected Gurney at all either. Oh, long slide there. Almost lost the back end. I kind of did lose the back end end, actually. But Looks like my qualifying woes have carried over a bit. As much as I worked on the setup for this car, 
I uh, just could never get it dialed in quite right. Always seems to have the back end stepping out a little more than I want it to. I have to admit, as far as the cars in the 1965 mod go, I really don't like the BRM. I'm kind of regretting using this car for the time being. I know that I've been saying that come come the Monaco Grand Prix, I'm going to be switching to the Honda. That's uh, in 1965. Honda didn't start uh, in Formula One until the Monaco Grand Prix in 1965. So at that point, I'm going to be switching to the Honda. Hopefully that car will be a little more stable for me. As, as well as I started, I seem to have lost contact now with Gurney. Got to try and concentrate, see if I can't reel him back in. Pretty sure I am faster than him. You can see the tire marks there from where I really lost the back end on the first lap. Now, I got back to Gurney, but it's that middle section of the track where I seem to be a lot quicker than my competitors. I seem to get, get back to them in the middle of the track, in the middle of the uh, lap, and then uh, the rest of the lap they pull away. can really kind of tell, one way you can tell how much I'm struggling to enter these corners is I'm having to get enter the corner really slow and then way before the apex I'm already getting hard back onto the gas to try and keep my speed up. I think I uh, ran that first sector of the course a little bit quicker this lap than the last lap. It seemed to be in better contact with Gurney now. Definitely catching him. Doesn't look like I'm going to get him this lap. I uh, probably could have tried on the inside, but it would have been pretty dangerous there. Hopefully these uh, frame rate issues I'm having don't show up too badly on the video. I think that's only three laps gone. Check the pit board this time by. Yeah, three laps to go. See if I can't get back to sixth by the end of the race. Yeah, you can really hear I'm having to really play with the throttle in the middle of the corner a lot just to keep the car settled. Just do not have a, a setup that I'm comfortable with. As, as long I've played with this setup quite a bit, but it just it's just not working for me. I'm not close enough this time, I don't think, to try and make a run on Gurney going into this next corner. We'll see. No, well, maybe so. Oh yeah. Up to sixth. Excellent. I'll see if I can put a little distance between myself and Mr. Gurney. Dan Gurney, of course, another American like myself. Oh, boy. Nearly lost it again in that corner. Back end just not wanting to stay underneath me, under, under braking. Last corner of the lap. Coming up to complete lap four. Two laps to go. Now 
wonder who this is in front of me. I have a feeling it's Jackie Stewart, my teammate. My current teammate, anyways. It won't be once I move over to Honda. Oh, Gurney got inside of me again. Now, unfortunately, because of one of the limitations with Grand Prix Legends, I'm going to have to re-qualify for the second race. And in, uh, in the real race in 1965, the starting order was determined for the second race by the finishing order in the first race. But uh, I don't have the ability to set the grid in Grand Prix Legends, so I won't be able to do that. Oh, jeez. Entered a little too quick that time. Oh, I'm really struggling here. Oh, went wide in this corner. Gurney's gonna get back past me. Oh boy, it's tight. I can hear him next to me. I don't see him yet though. just barely managed to stay ahead of him. One more lap. I'm gonna try and really buckle down and concentrate this lap. just not able to get to the apex. He almost got on the side of me in turn two there again just because I can't keep the car down at the apex. Oh, jeez. Just had a massive frame, <laughs> frame drop. I hope that didn't... hope that doesn't translate to the video. I have really lost contact with the guys in front of me. It's not a good sign. I really would have thought that I'd be quicker, even despite my poor qualifying. From there, that lap, I finally managed to <laughs> run that uh, turn seven correctly, and then I run turn eight too incorrectly. Got too far to the inside. There goes Gurney. Well, in truth, he deserved it. I was struggling this whole race. I think I only got to him. Oh, I'm gonna go around now. Oh yeah, I think that's three races in a row that I've managed to go have a spin. Uh, just not going well. Yeah, I gotta say I'm pretty disappointed with this first race. Did not go very well. Uh, well, I'm not going to do a whole in-lap since there's another race coming. Let's just uh, skip ahead and check the results. Uh, Graham Hill takes the victory. And uh, Jim Clark and the Lotus less than a second behind him, followed by John Surtees and Dan Gurney. And uh, then Jackie Stewart. Oh, it was Bruce McLaren is who I was chasing that whole race. Uh, huh. I thought that was, I thought for sure that was Gurney that I was f following, but uh, apparently not. Uh, in truth, Gurney, or er, uh, Bruce McLaren, he, he really did deserve sixth. I was not driving well at all. Uh, I'm lucky to come away with seventh, to be honest. But uh, re-qualify now and come back for the second race. All right, well, here we are for the second race now. Jim Clark starts on pole again, Graham Hill starts in second again, and I had a much better qualifying session this time with a 137.93. Uh, still probably could have done better, but uh, after I turned that lap in, I just about stopped. I, I thought, you know what, good enough compared to how I had done before, so uh, hopefully this race will go better, and uh, we'll just get right into it again. 
All right, here we are again on the grid for race number two. Starting inside the second row. And here we go. Got a good start again. This is going to be tight again, though. Oh, boy. Looks like I've already managed to pick up one position on Surtees into turn two. Inside of Clark. Got him. Holy cow. That worked really well. Up to second after three corners. He missed a shift. Well, that is fantastic. Second place already. Well, I gotta give Hill a go on this lap. If I don't get to him this lap, I don't think I'm gonna be able to stay with him. Generally speaking, I'm not very quick in the middle sector, the uh, first and last sectors of this course. The middle sector is where I make all my speed. Yeah, I haven't managed to get past him. I don't think I'm gonna be able to stay with him now. Still, this will make the boys happy in the pits. See two of their cars come across the line after the first lap, first and second. I really would like to just have a clean race, to be honest. I almost don't care where I finish, just as long as I can finish cleanly. Yeah, there goes Clark on the inside of me. Kind of saw that coming. I didn't think I'd be able to maintain second for very long. I'd, I'm not as quick as these guys, and I am really trying to have a clean race. But at the same time, this next corner that we're coming up to is one place where I really am able to outbreak my competition. You see where, how much I caught him there. Actually threw me off a little bit. the grass. For those of you that don't have much racing experience, the grass is generally a bad place to be. <laughs> and I did it again, that time on the inside. Not concentrating enough, making jokes. End of lap two. Almost to the end of lap two anyways. Still got Surtees behind me. Although he's all over me right now. Checking the inside line, make sure he doesn't get by me. Entering turn two here. See, as long as I can get to this corner of the track with Surtees behind me. I don't think he can pass me through the rest of the lap. I'm generally not as quick on this straightaway top speed as the other drivers, but this next corner, this next few corners, I'm able to really outbreak them. Of course, I say that, and then that time I waited so long to break that I ended up going too deep. Here's the corner that's been giving me all kinds of trouble. I almost did it again. Just really struggling with this car right now.
Well, though that that being said, I am still in third place. Halfway through the race. there entering this corner. Sertiz got inside of me. Oh, managed to get a good run off the corner though, so he's still back there. Like I said last lap, if I can get to this point in the track with him still behind me, I, I'm pretty much guaranteed to finish the lap out with him still behind me. He's a lot closer this time around though than he was last lap. Much better that time. There you can see I put a little bit of distance between myself and Surtees again. Not a lot to say at this point. Just really trying to get to the end. Without any more issues. Is there two laps left or one? I don't recall. I hope it's just one. No, it is two laps still. Oh, those tire marks, I'm almost guaranteed that those are mine. Boy, did I ever get that wrong that time. He's going to have the run on the inside going to this turn three. There he goes. Now I've got Stewart chasing me down. I did exactly what I didn't want to do. I let Surtees by before I got to turn four. Although I'm coming back at him. Let's see if I can't get him. Oh, I got back past him. Managed to stay in contact. I'm going to be in trouble though by turn two this next lap because he is a lot closer than he was before. One more lap to go. Just need one good lap, get a good finish in. He is, he's right there. He's looking inside. I didn't do a very good job of protecting the inside that time and didn't want to cause any trouble. And also, I knew I could get a run to the inside at this corner. Up to turn four. There we go. Out oh, of turn four, he's still behind me. Pretty sure that means I'm going to get third, as long as I can keep it clean. Oh, missed a shift. Doesn't seem to have mattered, though. He's still back there. This corner almost bit me again. Turn seven. Now into turn eight. Out of turn eight. One more corner to go. Oh, there we go. 
finally a decent finish. A decent race, no errors. No major errors anyway. Oh. Boy, that was exhausting. <laughs> Boy, I needed that though. I really needed to get a good finish. No spins. Just needed something to get my confidence level back up a bit. Because the first race, let's face it, was pretty terrible. This one wasn't exactly pretty, but third place is still third place. That'll probably put me fifth or sixth overall for the two races combined. We'll have to see how that all works out. Looks like Graham Hill won the second race. And since he won the first race, he'll have taken first overall. Jim Clark will get second overall. But one more, one more event done. The next one is, uh, I believe it's Syracuse. Syracuse. I just, I never, never really was able to get this car dialed in the way that I wanted to it for this track. I don't know why I struggled with it so much here, but honestly, I mean, it, I've been struggling with this, the setup for this car since the very first race. I'm, I'm not very comfortable on the BRM. That's good enough. We'll just stop here. So, there we have the end of the second race. Like I said, Graham Hill takes the win. Jim Clark second, and Danny Carnage, myself, third. Fastest lap was Graham Hill with a 136.96. And uh, let's see where that puts everything as far as the uh, overall standings. Graham Hill obviously taking the overall victory with uh, 19 minutes 49.890 total time. Jim Clark obviously in second. Uh, disappointingly, I still wound up seventh overall, which is where I finished the first race. I was so far behind everybody because of that spin right at the end that I wasn't able to make up any ground, even though I finished third in the second race. So uh, I still wound up seventh, and uh, John Surtees, Dan Gurney, Jack Stewart, and, uh, Jackie Stewart and uh, uh, Bruce McLaren all finishing ahead of me. So a little bit disappointed with the result, although I can't be too disappointed that second race went much better and you know managed to be clean mostly and uh, third place for that race. So I, you know that'll be that'll be good to carry a bit of momentum into the next event, which is the Grand Prix of Syracuse, the Syracuse race, another non-championship race. Um, so no points available, but I've been itching to get onto that track. I've never tried it before, but I, from what I've seen of it, it looks really fantastic, and it should be a lot of fun. So that's where the next event will be. Um, that'll be with the next episode, probably, uh, unless I do choose to make a, a special event episode. Uh, but, uh, you know, hopefully things will go better there. Uh, hopefully I'll be able to make these videos a little more often, a little more regularly than I have been able to over the past few months. But in the meantime, if you do like these videos, so make sure to subscribe, like the video, and uh, see you at the Syracuse Grand Prix.